Thank you for staying with us. Uh, well, you know, we talked about biodiversity the other time. And I tried to use my <laughs> extremely limited bio understanding. <laughs> Diversity, plenty. <laughs> that was what you said. But, <laughs> but I don't know. I'm not even going to go into it. Let's just welcome. <laughs> well, ju just to begin by saying that the 22nd day in May, every year is a day set aside to celebrate the International Day for Biological Diversity. See? Oh, it's biology. Oh, not okay. true. Sorry. Not bi. It's bio, <laughs> not bi. Okay. <laughs> to raise awareness of the vital importance of preserving biodiversity again. The theme for this year is building a shared future for all life. Mm -hmm. Please join me in welcoming Professor Adeshola Adipojo, who is Director General of Forestry Institute of Nigeria. He joins us virtually from Ibadan. Thanks for joining us this morning, Prof. Um, you have heard me embarrass myself by trying to define <laughs> biodiversity so limbly. Maybe we'll begin by that, uh, with that, by at least trying to understand what biodiversity is for people like me who are as ignorant. Sis, thank you. I think, sincerely, you've not embarrassed yourself. You oh, will really? still find that uh, in the midst of what you have said, is still part of the answer. It simply means varieties of life or heart. And uh, it has to do with plants, animals, and microorganisms. So you still find out that within what you have said, we can still place it under any of these uh, sub -edits. So it's basically talking about how do we cooperate together on art and everybody benefiting from each other without any party extincting the other party, which is the reason why we're facing so many challenges today, because uh, we don't respect other uh, part of the biodiversity, be it plant, be it animal, and be it microorganisms. And when any of them is missing along the line, without being a factor to one, the, uh, one or the other, then you have set one post free, which possibly could affect human health, and will begin to run up and, up and down like we are on, uh, my, on uh, COVID. Mm. Well, mm -hmm. perhaps uh, the begin where we, we began to do that to ourselves is um, urbanization, um, you know, uh, development, uh, as we often say, uh, such that, you know, I don't know, maybe you want to explain to us at what point we began to undo nature, so to speak, because it would seem like there, there is a need to pay attention because we've been doing something wrong. Sincerely, urbanization has nothing to do with uh, tampering with the uh, biodiversity. I think the problem really lies with understanding, and I don't want to see uh, uh, ignorance in the side of so many. Uh, there is something we call Man and Bosphere, which I chair for the whole world. Uh, it's under UNESCO. All we're saying in Man and Bosphere is that man and the Bosphere which is another word for biodiversity, should learn how to live harmoniously. You can depend on each other. When you are first from the biodiversity sustainably, then you are fair to each other. But when you depend on need to extinct one species or the other, then you are beginning to cause crisis. That's why the title for this year says building a shared future for all life, because it's all about life. Perhaps another understanding to come. When you, if you say you know, urbanization, urbanization has nothing to do with the degradation that we have been experiencing. Then what is causing? What necessitated this day? I have thought that, I mean, um, urbanization uh, has attempted to eliminate certain. Um, aspects of life um, around people, for instance, people don't want snakes, they don't want, you know, all these reptiles around them, so they, they pave, uh, you know, all of the, the, their compounds, so there's no plants in the compound and all of those things, uh, creating fences around themselves and all, so I thought that that's a kind of urbanization plus, yes, you know, industrialization, you know, chemicals and all those things, so you, you want to say something about that? Yeah, that, that's part of the uh, uh, lack of uh, uh, awareness or ignorance I'm talking about. Because okay. when you plaster or concrete 
every part of your house, already you are checking yourself out of oxygen. The more green around you, the better. If you look at the master plan of the SCT, you realize that there are a lot of green area that were naturally embedded in the master plan that people are now probably tampering with. All of these were to make oxygen sufficient, apart from keeping these things alive. And when you get to a, what we call either violet law, that's a natural forest, in that environment we say the animals has the right of way. Even if you are driving and you find a snake crossing, you are expected to stop for the snake to cross. I see. Before you continue your, your journey, but uh, because snakes, snakes are not your enemy, they are also scared of you. Was why when they cannot escape, they turn to attack you. Mm. But if you allow them to operate in their own ecosystem mm. and you don't go to intrude mm. because you are going to their habitat and you are chasing them in their own habitat, mm. then you don't have issues with them. But people thought or begin to believe that when you plaster almost everywhere around you. Uh, you are enjoying life. No. That's why you find the urban extremely hot. And when you go to the uh, sub ecosystem, you begin to wonder why the change in the, uh, in, the, uh, in, the, in, the in the weather there. Because mm -hmm. every green exudates oxygen and take in your own uh, carbon dioxide that's a waste as their own food. Mm -hmm. And you take the, uh, the oxygen they are exudating, which is a byproduct of every uh, plant or microorganism into your own system. And they also even eat. When you go to any upper or what we call a um, laboratory, and the plants there are medicinal, and you go as early as 6, 7 a.m., and you inhale those exudates of this plant, you find that you are earlier mm. Mm. than just uh, using AC to circulate the same uh, air, air around you. Mm. Thank you. Now, Prof, uh, as we opened this program today, we talked about urbanization to the extent that um, the example we actually gave was Lagos and Shagamo. That when I was in university, you drove from Lagos to Shagamo and you could see greenery on either side of the highway. But now it's like <laughs> Lagos and Shagamu are now one town. You get to Shagamu and you see that you have seen villages and settlements all along the road and all the greenery that you saw many, I mean, some years ago have disappeared. So I'm sure that is what Aya was talking about when he was talking about urbanization. How is that affecting biodiversity since all those greens which you say are so important to our life to our lives have all disappeared sincerely the two of you deserve to be ambassadors of environment because you're just speaking you're speaking to the problem we are facing now because uh most of the the this uh micro ecosystem that you used to know are disappearing and uh we have also lost too many species of plants that Apart from if that you come to our Iberium in forestry research east of Nigeria, then you won't have an idea of how some plant or insect looks like. And what was and what is the what is directly responsible to this that uh, my principals in the, in the ministry, the ministers are addressing is how do we collaborate with each of these states? Because remember the land land, land use act are taking the power over land to the state. And um, when you are not replenishing, that's exactly the point I'm trying to make. Uh, even we that are uh, forest researchers of Nigeria also harvest from the forest. But we're saying you should do this harvesting sustainably in a way that it will not affect uh, uh, the entire ecosystem. But what you are even seeing, not only to Shagamu, driving from Lagos to Ibadan, you're only seeing the edge of the road. There's nothing behind it anymore because all has been uh, deforested, both legally and otherwise, mm -hmm. away from those places. And that is why the runoff of water begin to move faster, and the erosion is increasing, and the gully erosion is building, and that's why we have a lot of land degradation problem. So that is not what we call urban, but because there's something we call urban forestry, which we are not saying you should not develop, 
but make sure that you respect the trees you find, the one that is not obstructing uh, your, your building, you let it be. And when you take anyone off where you are building, ensure that you replace them around the house. Then that will still maintain the ecosystem and balance the, the carbon in the, in the air. Hmm. But Prof, where did we begin to get this wrong? Here is why I'm asking. The country, the Federal Republic of Nigeria, is a signatory to many of these uh, treaties, agreements, you name it, concerning climate change, environmental protection, and all those things. And they are supposed to be domesticated, not just in Nigeria as a nation, but to the sub-regional levels, even the sub-sub-regional levels, if I can use the term, local governments, uh, states, and the rest of them. So, and what you said just now about, the, about us just seeing the face or faces of the forests that behind the forests, off of the roads, they have been, you know, pulled down, you know, houses have been built on them and all of that. Uh, there are many, many people who can easily relate with that. So is it that the message is not getting home to the states who literally superintend over the, 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 the forests and all of them and the federal government is just producing, providing, should we just say, pro providing backups or you know, protection and all of those things? Is it that the message is not getting home to the authorities or that we are just paying lip service to the agreements that we sign? Okay, let me take it, uh, that, that, that your question in two parts. One, the federal government is doing its own part. If you remember 2019, precisely on the 3rd of September, the president made a commitment in Ongar that will be planting 25 million trees uh, annually. Uh, at that, we will not be able to plant 25 any year, or at least we have once or twice exceeded 20 million. But what we're not doing is to approach states individually. Any state that is willing, then we'll collaborate with them, do an MOU, they provide us land, and we'll begin to plant uh, on, a, on a relationship basis that we don't need the economic part of this tree we're planting, but just to allow the tree to survive, to contribute to a carbon sink, why you can uh, allow your, your inhabitants or your communities around there to benefit economically from those who are planting so that uh, uh, symbiotically we can manage whatever we were provided. Mm. But the challenge or the challenges we are having really uh, lies with the state. Uh, if you go to Ogun State, Ogun State is the only uh, state in this country that has the uh, uh, Ministry of Forestry. And they are the only one housing the only biosphere we had before, before we added three last year, which is Oman Biosphere Reserve, where you can still find the wild elephant in their tents. Uh, that's why you must have been hearing that sometimes they, they come out of the bush and, to, and take over the Bini uh, uh, Jebu road. Mm -hmm. Now, this is the problem we're having with the federal is doing their own part because National Park is keeping of about 8 or 7 percent uh, forest cover we have today. About 3 percent is with uh, National Park. Uh, Free is holding about 2 point something percent why uh, stakeholders and some state now if you go to government state they are doing what they call go green they are promoting and they are, are partnering with so many of, uh, of our uh, outfit there we are planting for gumbi almost every year the same thing kaduna bono state is doing that uh adamawa is doing that uh niger wanted to start with us last year but because of the insecurity uh they are facing so individual state i mean states on their own approach us, we do MOU and work with them to increase uh, for the country. But some states that are not interested, you can't force them because the Land Use Act and give them the power over their land. Okay. So uh, except the, the welcome you can't do otherwise. But it does, I, I still go back to that same question of understanding what the issues are because the implications are not just for today. They are for maybe a decade, two, maybe centuries from now. So if the implications of their actions or inactions are lost on them, then we are literally destroying the future from now. So is, do you think that the implication is lost on them? I ask, my, my apologies, I ask that question against the backdrop of the fact that 
Virtually every state has a Ministry of Agriculture. But when you talk about Ministry of Diversity, I mean, beg your pardon, Ministry of Forestry, there, there'll be questions around, you know, duplicating of uh, functions and all of those things. So if, is it that the implications, the humongous implications of protecting biodiversity is lost on the states that are not paying attention, so to speak? Let, let me clear that, uh, because each time agriculture is mentioned, it makes me very uncomfortable mm. because agriculture is part of the problem of forest because they clear land and they must cut down the trees so that the agricultural or uh, annual uh, uh, planting they want to make can survive. Mm. So we are, are putting it from different angle. One, that's why we're preaching what we call agroforestry. That means you can do spacing in planting trees and still do your cropping within these trees and you still achieve the same thing. But the second aspect we're preaching is that they should do intensive farming. If you go to Japan, most of the Asian countries that don't have land, they could farm on the same land three, four times a year because they have that variety. So they work with limited land, but because we are always have this erroneous belief that we have fast land and everything must be clear for farming. And so that is also having consequence, uh, consequences on us. So we don't uh, uh, work with agri, we work more with Ministry of Environment. But what I'm saying is that Open State has separated even forestry from environment. Mm. So that, that's the point I'm trying to make so that they can pay attention to, to, to the forest cover because there's a, there's a difference between vegetation cover and forest cover. Mm. Okay. Vegetation cover means you can have grass that gives you an impression that it's green, mm -hmm. but during the dry season, the grass turns brown. But if it is tree, that is forest cover. Okay. Now, straight to your question now, uh, I want to answer you honestly that most states understand the implication, but they are carried away or overwhelmed with the economic benefits of taking this wood off where they are. And I don't want to, I don't know how to put it that they know that uh, the consequences probably may not be some of them in the office. And this is what we've been preaching. Okay. That let's work for the future and not now. Mm -hmm. So it is the economic benefit, the immediate economic benefit. And if it's even being plowed back to the same ministry, plant back what they have taken, it will have been better. But when this revenue is generated, it's not taken back to the same place it was taken from. Just when you, you talked about economic benefits now, I want to understand what you mean by that. Because there are those who believe that foreigners come from various parts of the world to uh, cut our trees, harvest them, export them out of the country and bring back, uh, you know, finished products and all of that. Mm -hmm. So is that what you're talking about? Yes, there's no law that asks you to take such out and bring finished product. The rule is you must take out of any country. That is the scientist's rule. You must take out of any country, process, that's the word, process wood, mm -hmm. not the log. Okay. And as I speak to you, the Federal Ministry of Environment has its ban still place on exporting this wood out of the country, but it's still going out. So the Federal Ministry of Environment is not, man it does not have that power to know how they are going out. Mm. So who should, who should know? We have written to everybody who we expected to know and who should take uh, 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 appropriate action. Mm. And everybody will tell you action has been taken. But most times you still find out that where are these logs going? But if you find them in a sawmill today, tomorrow they are not there. And so where are they disappeared to? Mm. Now, Prof, do you think that there is enough awareness in Nigeria about all these things that you're talking about? Because in some cases, I'm sure you have found, those who are doing the logging are those in the villages who have no idea what biodiversity is, what forest cover is, and all that. So are we doing enough awareness from when people are young so that they grow up to appreciate the greens around them, the trees, 
and what benefits they are to human beings. Sincerely, we are doing awareness. I, I, I can agree, I may agree with you that it probably is not enough uh, that we should do more. But uh, I still want to believe that um, we're doing the awareness and around where we have this forest, our presence uh, is, 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 is there. And we, beyond the awareness, they are also being empowered. I share with you the Omobas Forest Reserve I told you that's in Ogun State. Korean government for keeping that forest alone still came to that forest and invested about 10 million in the life of the dwellers there to, uh, I mean, empower them in one of the uh, activities they are doing the other. Because all we are trying to preach is where if we are saying they should not kill uh, fishes from the stream with chemicals, then establish them with fish pump, which we did in uh, Omobas Forest Reserve. If we say, okay, don't, let them not put fire in the forest because they are looking for grass cutter, then domesticate some for them, which we have done also in Omo. So if you go to the communities around Omo, they are fully aware and they are embracing. The same thing if you go to Bini, Olunibi, Sakoba area, they believe in what we are doing and they are part of it. Mm. The same thing if you go to Cross River or Kwango, they are, they are always enthusiastic to see us because we work together. But what we are saying is uh, when you are allowing the, these foreigners to have access to them and they begin to entice them with the kind of money they've not seen before, so definitely they're going to work with them. Yeah, but yeah. if they are not allowed to assess them, mm. probably if they don't have approval mm. to even cut those logs in the first place, so they, don't, they won't have these community people to, do, to romance mm. to have their way. You and the federal government does not have the power to give approval. Approval lies with the states. Hmm. Who has the who the land use act has empowered control by a state? Yes. All this, the federal government can do through us or other agencies is to advise them on the implication of this and which we're doing. And we're hoping that uh, this will improve. You just spoke about um, killing fish with chemical. I mean, how does that happen, one? And I know that in Lagos area at one time around Makoko, we heard that a lot of mercury was found in the fish that was being caught and sold in that area. How does that happen? You know, these uh, people in the rural area, sometimes could be terribly mischievous. They don't even know the implication of these chemicals because they also eat out of these uh, fishes, they, 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 whatever. So they block stream at one end and and at another end, particularly where they know that there are a lot of uh, body, uh, water body there, then they could put snipers or whatever in it, knowing fully that this fish, yes, or the way you know, gamma change or whatever, knowing fully well that these fishes will rush out or some will die and float. But because you will just stop by the road and pick these fishes, you may not know actually how they were harvested from with whatever body, uh, water body. Oh, God. Body so that's Prof. what we always ask everybody to, Prof, to thank, thanks for discouraging us from eating fish <laughs> <laughs> not only fish not only fish, even the bush meat you buy on the road you may not know how they were killed oh god mm. even the seedlings you buy in nurseries or by the roadside you may not be sure how they are raised some will tell you that this is uh, uh, grafted and you, most of them come back to us I planted this particular three species in my house I was told that it will start fruiting five years. It has spent 10 years. It's not fruiting. And we'll take them to some who have done in our offices and said, look at this is three years. Look at this is two years. They are fruiting. Why do you go to the roadside? Hmm. Uh, Prof, um, we, have, we seem to have moved from fishery to from uh, forestry well, to fishing. It's, um, it's all about yes, I know, I know. I'm just trying to... You know, <laughs> anything in the forest okay. is either... Is it a flora or fauna? Okay. Our is non-timber forest product. Okay. The fish is them is what we call non-timber forest product. Okay. It's part of okay. the same thing with snail. Here's where I'm going, Prof. And you started to answer the question. So please answer all of it. What are the general components or elements or sphere of biodiversity? Just so that someone who has no idea what we are talking about can be educated and begin to take um, caution. Is, there are basically three components. The animals, 
the plants, the microorganisms. organisms. Okay. And all of them must live harmoniously with woman. When you say why, when you say microorganisms, please educate. Those ones that you cannot see with your eyes. But are also like like you eat your food, you put it into your, in your mouth. There's an enzyme in your mouth that has to mix with the food to digest it. But you can't see it with your eyes. Correct. So what's that got to do with the things that are going on outside? Because most of these plants and animals you are talking about, they relate, they are affected to one microorganism or the other. That is why people are saying uh, uh, coronavirus is from one animal or the other. But to that animal is not injurious, but to woman is injurious. And so when that animal is taken out, you have set that microorganism free, and when it interferes with man, the man will react. Please slow down, Prof. Now I'm, I'm getting confused and scared. Um, we, we, there's a lot of stories around how the coronavirus disease came to be in the first place. Came from an animal, just as you have said. But um, in terms of taking it out, uh, I don't understand what you mean because you're an African. People will always eat bush meat. Okay, let me give you this simple example. <laughs> this cup is mine. Okay. And it, it, it works well with me. And if I'm no longer available, uh, my son or somebody has put it on the head, probably there is uh, the person's allergy to uh, what is in my own sweat. So you see the person reacting. So also, is every microorganism work with a particular vector? Or that the vector I mean, this could be animal, it could be plant. But when you take out the host, you set that in that, that particular microorganism free, and that will assist. So you ask to condition itself to assist on another host, and the host will react. So when the host reacts, you begin to say it's an infection or it's a disease or whatever. Okay, so in terms of, from what you have said now, how vulnerable are we on Earth to things that we do not know, understand, or are willing to accept easily? I will see. Okay, the, the, the more we allow the ecosystem to remain intact, the safer we are. Mm. The more we are degrading and taking some species out into extinction, the more vulnerable we are to what we don't know about. That sounds like the abridged version of the answer. But Prof, there are implications. <laughs> okay, so we, we talked about the implications of urbanization, industrialization, and the rest of it. Earth will, I mean, human beings will always um, evolve from one thing to the other. Technology wasn't here about 200 or even 100 years ago at the level at which it is now. So. The, the marriage or the balance of industrialization development over the years, cum uh, biodiversity, uh, we need some, maybe a roadmap or a template of the balance. Is that lost on us or we're just ignoring it? The, the, that's the word. The balance is what we are talking about. And that's where the title of this year is saying, build a shared future. That shared future is talking about the word we just used now, balance it out ensure that nothing is extincted and nothing is taken out. Make sure that you are relating with each other sustainably. So how so that, do we get that done, Prof? How do we do, do that? It's simply to just respect everybody who is on the, on the heart. That's the plant, the animals, and the microorganism. And, and I've tried to explain to you today, take Lagos, for example. You can hardly find any one hectare a uh, uh, forest anywhere in Lagos. Thank God they are even doing the median and some um, parts are green up now to better uh, um, bring, down, bring down the, the temperature of, of that environment. But what we're saying is that we must promote green. If you are building your house, ensure you leave some portion of that part of your house, either for a small orchard or for a small green environment, that mm. will better the life of the inhabitant of that compound. Mm. So you are not doing the community and favor, and that's why uh, in, in the developed world, they will believe that if you spend more, or if you take care of your environment, you're going to spend less on it. Yeah, but, but Professor, you need to explain to us how we're going to learn to respect the mosquito <laughs> and learn that it has a right to live, because it is killing us. 
mosquito cannot be around your house if there's no water, uh, stagnant water around your house. If you don't, if there's no any water uh, uh, around there where it's going to breed from, it will not exist. And mosquito has a very short lifespan. If it does not get somebody to, to or any uh, factor to live on two, three days, it's dead. Prof, you have just raised another problem now <laughs> from this thing that you just said. So uh, there are no, if there are mosquitoes around, naturally. You don't have stagnant water around you. There's mosquito there no... everywhere, Professor. They are it's everywhere. Stagnant water around them. Go and see, there must be drainage somewhere around you okay. that's not flowing. Our drainages are open in Nigeria. But if it's flowing, you have no challenge. They hardly flow. <laughs> That's where the problem lies. They hardly flow. So that's what I'm saying. If we spend more in keeping the environment clean, <laughs> then we're going to spend less. Mm. Well, then <laughs> perhaps uh, um, Alero needs to check her drainage system and all over the city of Lagos anyway, you know, because we, we literally... I think if I check the one on my street, what about the one on the next street? Well, that's the problem. You have to talk to yourselves for biodiversity, <laughs> you know. But you know, God Prof... Bless you. <laughs> Prof, um, this information that you are giving, simplistic as it, as it sounds, seems lost on us and it looks like the micro uh, a microcosm of the various issues that we need to replicate all over the place i remember it was in the fashola government i think that many people began to call him the is it the flower governor or something <laughs> baba flower baba flower he all he did was you know green you know make that was a wonderful job he did yes, yes. Job. it was you know that was done at the time so in terms of getting it done, uh, we essentially don't, shouldn't have to limit it to government for what you were saying just now. Exactly. So for the person listening to us in various parts of Nigeria at this moment, what can they do today? It's a Saturday morning. What can they do today? What can they do now in order to begin to um, buy back some of the green that we may have lost and build fact, a better biodiversity? I have the mandate of my principals, that's my ministers, if you have land that you have a charity to and you want to partner with us, we'll do an MOU with you. We'll bring seedling free of charge, plant on your land. All our own MOU is please don't cut this tree. Whatever is the food benefit you are getting from it, you can go away with it. We don't need that really. Or you give to the really? less privileged to be around But we, the federal government is promoting via various means that we must keep planting. In fact, the challenge or challenges, one of the challenges we're having now is having enough land to plant mm. in view of the various security challenges we have in state that uh, we have the land. So if anybody, private organizations that have land and want to partner with us, please, they are free to write us and say, we have this land, I have a charity to it. Why we're asking for charity is we don't want to plant because it's costing federal government a lot of money mm -hmm. and a year or two later, you will tell us the land is on the uh, dispute or whatever, and somebody is clearing off what we are labored to. And it's costing the government a lot of money mm -hmm. to, to raise those ceilings to plant. And we have shortened gestation period mm -hmm. for those who want to plant around their houses. Most of the fruit you are thinking take 20, 30 years to fruit. We have shortened their gestation period to five, maximum seven years. We have a bono which that is fruiting at five years now. Mm -hmm. We have... Uh, uh, veterinarian that share butter, 14 and five years, and so many others. Mm. We at least we are giving mandate to work on 10 indigenous tree species. We are able to on about seven or eight now that are fruiting at five to seven years of age. So it, it, the adage of evil plant do not live to harvest is no longer there. Mm. You will, so you can even get this plant around your 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 houses, and this will also contribute to what we're talking about. So, Prof, what kind of land is, does it have to be a large expanse of land or is there a minimum um, size to the land that you would come to plant on? For an anything for one hectare is, is good for us. Okay. That's, anything like, like football feed is enough for us. Okay. Now, uh, how about wetlands? There are people who buy property, who buy, you know, landed property and they buy wetlands, uh, which someone or maybe the state or somewhere, you know, may have sold to them. How do we protect those? Should governments be selling wetlands or should they be using
using wetlands for anything else other than environmental? Uh, no, it's not even advisable because those are the areas we have been mandated to turn. Because every wetland, if you trace it further, you realize that it's coming from uh, 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 from the, the either from the ocean or from one sea or the other. So, and, the, and those areas are supposed to be planted out into what we call mangrove. Because if you notice that there are, there are plants also that also survive uh, in the water environment, which is what we call mangrove forest, which we are also doing, or uh, we, we are about starting around rivers towards uh, Baesa now to to save all of those areas. Because if your mangrove is doing well, then you have less of water coming to the interland. Well, Prof, we have to thank you very much for your time this morning because it's been quite illuminating and hope that a sizable number of us have taken home the lessons. Professor Adishola Dipoju is Director General Forestry Institute of Nigeria. Thank you so much. And Professor, happy you, Biodiversity friend. Day tomorrow. Thank you so much. And I hope you also start planting. Well, that's a very, very good one. I'll also take notes. All right. <laughs> um, we'll take a short break now when we return. The show continues. Please stay with us.